thank you, Kathy, for joining us today. And um, I'm going to turn it over to you. Oh, oh Art, no, thank you. Anxious Nation, too. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Nation, which is great. Art, thank you so much. What, what a joy to be with everyone today. And Oh my goodness, let's talk interactive. Uh, you, you all know it. it made its debut on the Inc. 5000 landing among the top 500 fastest growing companies in America. And as Art shared, it is, uh, it's a privilege to serve on boards uh, for so many nonprofits uh, from the NFL, um, Providence School, the James Madison Program at Princeton University. Um, serving on boards of education for over 21 years. And this is the first and only for-profit board besides our company, Kathy Ireland Worldwide. And it is an honor. So great appreciation to you, Art. And to each member of this esteemed panel, um, Elliot Weiss, Dr. Eleanor McCants-Katz, Eric Hargan, uh, incredible information that you shared today. I continue to learn more and more and so grateful. And our topic today is of critical importance, back to school, mental health. It's urgent and we're in the midst of the greatest crisis for students, in my opinion, which young people of every generation have ever endured in American history. I, I can't think of a more difficult time to be a young person. Um, as we've talked about COVID-19 and the variants, the political, cultural, racial unrest, substance use disorder known as SUD, including alcohol, uh, social media bullying, in-person attacks that are causing young people to face greater anxiety than any generation at any other point in our lifetimes. And fragile mental health in our youth is a crisis of grave concern. And for our children to thrive, um, Art mentioned um, this film, a, a bold new film exploring anxiety in kids. It's aptly named Anxious Nation. And that is a challenge that is facing each of us. And fragile mental health has intense contributing factors, including yet not limited to excessive time spent in consumption of dangerous social media, where young people often experience greater stress, depression, and anxiety, which tragically is known to cause suicidal ideation and indeed the frighteningly frequent loss of life. And the onset of major mental health crisis including major depression, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, often begin in adolescence. And a question we must ask is, which behaviors in our communities are triggers for the onset of these illnesses? And SUD, including street drugs, prescriptions, alcohol, sniffing and huffing of household chemicals, th these are truly terrifying and easy access, easier than ever before. From online to Uber means our kids can obtain drugs via a tap on their phone while in school and drugs are ordered by students in class, delivered at school during the break. And substance use disorder is starting at a younger age each year. So we must be alert and recognizing the systemic threats to our children's mental health in these unusually stressful and scary times and the impact on mental health, it is crucial. And missing the warning signs of mental health problems, including substance issues, um, that, is that is literally uh, just it is frighteningly, in too many grief-filled instances, it's a life or death concern. And we, we talked about telehealth and as a board member and advocate for LTI, I believe in this company. Our company is committed to accessing care for all. And, and still, how do we help anyone 
in trouble get the needed help. And we invite everyone to be familiar with mentalhealthfirstaid.org, which does not treat as in physical first aid. It gives us essential intervention tools until we connect with a vulnerable person with professional care and the ability to solve these problems. It's as available as the substances, which accelerates the issue. So telehealth, like the drugs, is just a phone tap away. So please help anyone in your life make the choice for life. And candid, transparent conversation in every family, it's critical. Causes for anxiety and panic are literally at every turn. And our children, they recognize our fears. And uh, the famous quote, children may not obey, but children will listen. Young people are very observant. And whether we intend to or not, we often communicate our anxiety and increasing it in their lives. And that's something we must be mindful to. I mean, with social media, media in general, there is so much fear pumped into the lives of families everywhere. So we really need to take note of that. And how is that impacting our families, our children? And in addition to LTI, we've, as Art mentioned, we've opened Kathy Ireland Recovery Centers in Laconia, New Hampshire, uh, Williamson, West Virginia, with assertive growth strategies, making help available and accessible for people and affordable. And earlier, I, I acknowledged a very important documentary, Anxious Nation. It's premiering at film festivals. It's directed by Academy Award, Sundance Film Festival Award, and Emmy Award winner, Vanessa Roth. It's created and produced by my friend and colleague, Laura Morton, who is the author of 21 New York Times bestsellers. And Anxious Nation, it brings the vital need for parent-child dialogue and healthier relationships into sharp focus. So we must not ostrich, just hide our heads in the sand and believe, oh, you know, not in my family, because every family is at risk. Every family, uh, every child can be impacted by this. Um, this is something that, that impacts everyone. No one is, is immune to this. Um, and every child can be attacked outside of the home and through online communication within the home as well. And so we, we love our children. And yet we know that love alone is not enough when caring for young people. Love must be a verb. Action is required to protect. And so I, I shared with Laura that I would be meeting with all of you today. And I asked her what I could share about this film that she believed would be most helpful. So a quote from Laura. Laura says... We hope our film initiates and encourages honestly open conversations between parents and their kids, reminding families and friends support really matters. We're calling powerfully on systems, organizations, and everyone to invest in solid resources to take care of our young people. And LTI addresses this so powerfully and beautifully. And the genetic component of mental health issues, it requires awareness and understanding. And whatever problems we face as parents, we must address because inadvertently, whatever behaviors we're presenting are so easy for children to emulate. The recreational use of certain substances is something we must be aware of, especially in the family setting. And my intention is not to cause more anxiety or to be critical. Rather, it is a surprise to many to learn that a child's first interaction with drugs is often in the parent's medicine chest. And we know marijuana use, as an example, in the home is able to forge a connection to other drug and alcohol behaviors in our children. So together, we're able to engage in healthy living and thereby encourage every member of the nuclear and American family 
to reach for mental and physical wellness. And we can't begin too early to celebrate the benefits of communication, alertness uh, to anxiety and activities of fitness for our bodies, minds, and souls. It is of the utmost importance. And thank you all so much for investing in back to school, supporting our children's mental health and our schools and communities. This is so much more valuable than any backpack, online course, or or fashion statement. This back to school can be life-saving. So Thank you to this incredible panel. Art, thank you for bringing us together and for the work that you're doing. God bless you. Absolutely. Kathy, thank you so much. And um, Kathy, I I know there's another question out there and we started a few minutes late, so we have a little bit of time, but I wanted to see, because you're such a powerful voice. If you believe in it, you are an absolute powerful voice. And what, what, happen to make you really want to be a voice for mental health, substance abuse, if it's something you feel like sharing. If not, we have a question out there, but uh, I know there's a driving force for you. Uh, Art, thank you. Um, I don't know any family who is not impacted by mental health, substance use disorder. I don't know anyone who's not impacted by it. And as uh, our panel has discussed, Children are particularly vulnerable for so many reasons, and uh, it's it's grown at an exponential rate, and we must be proactive to stop this. Uh, children are vulnerable, um, and our, I mean, we, we've discussed this. I, I love children. Um, I know you, you all do, and I uh, they hold a very special place in my heart. And I just believe that we've got to do all that we can to protect them. And I believe uh, young people are under attack and we've got to do everything in our power to protect them. And so I, I just, I love that the history of LTI art, I love how um, there's been such a concerted effort to get this into the schools so kids have a safe place to be connected to get the care that they truly need. And um, I believe in it. I believe in the results. And, uh, and, and you are correct, Art, and that I don't like to do anything half measure. And our team joins me in that. When um, uh, y- you know our process, I ask a lot of questions and uh, really need those answers. And we have such respect for you for what you've built and, uh, and the house, how LTI works and how it serves people around the world. It's amazing. So thank you. 